Hi, it's Mike with Yugtastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2015, and I'm sitting here with Vecheslav Igorev, who gave a talk on benchmarking JS. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Um, when you talk about benchmarking JS, are you talking about client side JS? I mean, JS lives in a lot of different places. Or is this is this Node? Is this Browser JS? What 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 are you what are you benchmarking? So I don't have any particular focus. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, looking at the pure JavaScript performance. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you run your JavaScript on the client side or mm -hmm. the server side. Basically, no matter where you are, my talk applies to you. Okay, so you know, even if I'm in V8 or Rhino or yeah. or whatever, it's 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 going to be okay. So when when you talk, what what techniques and tools were you talking about? Where did this this talk come from? Where, what experiences did you have that led you to this? Well, I used to work on the V8 team, and when you work on a like in a team of the VM engineers, mm -hmm. you usually get different questions from the users, in this case, JavaScript developers, mm -hmm. who don't completely understand what happens inside the VM and how they should measure performance of their code. Mm -hmm. And that's what this talk is based on. Basically, I monitor different social media and I see people posting different benchmarks. Yeah. And I look what happens there and I explain why these benchmarks are usually incorrect. <laughs> and uh, that's, yeah, that's okay. basically so, based on my experience. So what is what are some of the, the things that you see that are incorrect and, and and like what are some maybe some quick tips that maybe or articles people should read or or try to understand better about JavaScript performance? I think the biggest issue is that people still think that the JavaScript implementations are very dumb, mm -hmm. but these implementations are quite smart. So I think that that's the main thing that they should know about mm -hmm. that, and they should always account for the very advanced optimizations that the JS engines mm -hmm. are capable of doing now. So there is no real single tip. They should just try to understand what's happening on the okay. side. Now, I mean, do you, if you're dealing with the V8 optimization, I mean, because one of the things is JavaScript is one of those run anywhere and it runs on V8 or Rhino or different browsers or you know do does does the wisdom of of this is good for JavaScript apply generally everywhere or do you find people maybe benchmarking and you say oh you did that benchmark on V8 try it on a different VM and, and you'll see that it gets much different performance characteristics is that a pretty common situation sometimes that happens but mm -hmm. uh, these days the implementations really converge on a, they apply the same techniques so uh, it's quite often that you see the same performance characteristics mm -hmm. across all of the platforms you use that's why uh, this talk is quite universal and this issue is quite universal okay and um, when you're looking at uh, the way JavaScript is being implemented I mean I've heard I'm hearing uh, on Twitter there's there's a number of people that are tweeting about you know if you're doing if you're trying to implement a class structure in JavaScript you know I'm just talking about writing JavaScript um, you know, don't re-implement uh, the classical inheritance uh, uh, structure inside of JavaScript um, versus, you know, using the uh, polymorphic capabilities of JavaScript and, and the prototypal. That's actually the word I was trying to say. Trying to say prototype. It's the end of the day, guys. Sorry. Um, the uh, the prototypal inheritance and using different ways of structuring your application. Does that often not just play into um, uh, the way people reason about writing JavaScript, but its performance? That you know, if I'm in implementing a class in JavaScript, that, you know, is that generally going to perform worse or better than if I do something that's more of a native structure? So the the thing is that JavaScript engines they evolve naturally so they follow the paths that people are using okay. so they optimize for the patterns that people are using in this sense if you use constructors and prototypes this is actually the most performant way of writing JavaScript mm -hmm. especially if you keep everything like kind of static mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah you just follow the common patterns and then you will be safe okay okay and um, as far as uh, working on the V8 engine itself that I didn't realize it before for a conversation um, that, that, how did you get involved in working on actually the V8, which has become something of a uh, of a industry changer, not just with the Chrome browser, but with with Node being built on it? I mean, you're you're working on some pretty intense uh, technology. How did you get involved in working on that team, and and what were you doing with them? 
So, uh, well, I stopped working on V8 like okay. three years ago. Oh, okay. But, uh, okay. but uh, the, I was doing the Java VM before back in Russia, and mm -hmm. uh, then V8 people were searching for like a person with a compiler mm -hmm. background, and they hired me. So I joined the team, and I worked on different parts of the V8, so from garbage collection to compiler infrastructure, and uh, yeah, so that's that's what I was doing. So basically, I have the background and this, and that background seems to fit with what the team needed. So. Right. Okay. And you know, you described earlier about two things. You know, one is that the uh, JavaScript implementations are much smarter than people give them uh, credit for, um, and and that the current patterns are are of, of how people write their applications are being used to to drive the future of of how these JVMs, I mean, excuse me, JVMs, um, I know, JSVMs yeah. work. I mean, uh, is there something that in the direction that you just see as a common pattern that people are using that you kind of wish they would just move away from, though? Like, even though we have classical inheritance structure, or what we call classical, you know, class and inheritance, but if they just maybe wrote their JavaScript this other way, it would be a lot more native, and they might get a lot more benefits that they don't see now. Is there anything, any advice or observations you've made? No, I actually have an opposite issue. So oh, really? the, the JavaScript VMs, even though they are quite smart, they still, because they evolved by following what people do, they are very focused. Mm -hmm. So what I really want them to do is to start expanding this area of fast JavaScript mm -hmm. and support like different corners of the language they do not support well or yeah. they just fall to the slow path and so on. So it's actually the other way around, yeah. not the people. So the, the Well no, you're saying you wish they would do more of, of be yes. aware of these other types of structures. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you are a little bit frustrated with it. Hey, we're just going to do this one type of, yes. of structure, but JavaScript is so much more than that. Yeah, precisely. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time thank to speak with me. Thank you for speaking with me. Yes, I appreciate it. All right, thank you.